afternoon, ladies and uh, gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast from your host, Imperial Dane, Master of Propaganda here of the Reich Defender of the Fatherland. Off here to an exciting one air versus one on Langraskaya between Melchip fighting for the Soviet Union for the glory of Gomlet Stalin and the second tank corps facing off against Deutschland under Thunderhunt and the 506th Schwerer Panzerabteilung, which was usually a bit more than. Well unit which did have a few elements to sort of operate independently on its own it of course was always attached to another unit but usually had its own escort of infantry pioneers reconnaissance and the likes got troops there sneaking off to either side we've got festung armor spearhead and mobile defensive thunderhand versus counter attack guard motor and shock rifle here for melchit Bulletins are pretty much all infantry, and we start starting by the here with a dual MG42 start here from Fandahan. Now this is pretty rare to see if anything at all, which of course rather indicates that Thunderhands might be going for initially a bit more sort of static play style, setting up a few MG42s at vital points, and that way sort of trying to store the opponent while hold some vital points. In this case, we are noting he's going for sort of the more resource-heavy points initially. Hope to hold the fuel point here with the MD42, and I hope nothing happens around here. I imagine a second MD42 will be set up to sort of guard this. You're also getting some barbed wire here, different points of cover or direct approach. In this case, for example, no points are being secured, points are secure. We got a bit more of a normal approach from Melchick going westwards. Of course, conscripts will be heading towards the center as well, and I imagine. There might also be some troops sneaking up here. I mean, it's very common for a southern Soviet player to go for a broad approach. And it's personally the approach I favor as well. That way you can usually sort of poke up where the German player is strong and where he's weak. And that way you sort of take it from there. Interesting enough, he's actually moving the MD-42 very much independently on its own. The left flank, highly risky move right there by Thunder. And that could easily backfire on him force his retreat already. You got some Gunadesa rhyming as well. The MD-42 guarding here continually. Setting up to support here, the Pioneers. In this case, it works out well, but of course, there's some comments here that could flank the MD42. Can't see falling back. Not bad there, not bad there. Melchit quickly shifting away, taking advantage of the terrain here. We've got the MD42 falling into the building here. Bit of risky maneuver, because you know there's conscripts guarding all the way back here. And looks like, no, he's going for the munitions point. The MD42 comes to guard here. Right now, though, Thunderhunt's opening has left him with a few, well, Openings as we've got there, Melch then pushing forwards, taking territory left and right because there's absolutely nothing guarding the center. Basically, Thunhand sort of opening disposition has left him rather weak in the center. We've got Bartwire here to basically, I think, sort of cover the MD42 versus the direct assault, maybe a bit harder to move in, in particular, get towards the cover. Interesting to see there, by the way, by Thunderhunt. In this case, it also means he hasn't been able to bend at the point neutral where he might already be forced away there, rendering it a bit pointless, in fact. So in that regard, I would have a bit of a hard time here describing I think, the opening of Thunderhand here as the most efficient one. I imagine he might have been doing it for some reason or the other, thinking that it could work, maybe it's interesting, but either way, it's not really functioning again. It's rather leaving already here with most of his territory already cut off, and his units sort of, well, not really sort of within each other's supportive ranges. we got another going to escort down the way for Thunderhand. Four countries there for Melchit with the two comp engines. We've got a country squad there rushed off the field. The MD42 continuing to fight here. Conscript slightly bleeding out. Still otherwise holding on recently nicely. No 10 and Molotov, for example, here, for example, in field infirmary. But the Molotov, for example, burn out the MD42. There we go. Conscript suppressed. We got an gear moving up there. Media under fire there from the MD42. That's in under the roof. Pioneer's reinforcing. Thunder has slightly pushing back again. Territorially, though, he is very much behind there. And there we go, flame for the time from the north. Compelling Thunder here to fall back with MD42. And overall, what was he able to do here? Do well, not really a lot. He didn't even get a kill on the MD42. I don't think he needs to do much with the territory. So overall, I mean, as a person, the theory was it would draw away pressure from elsewhere. The problem was, though, Mech Melcher didn't take the bait. And if he doesn't take the bait, then he can easily backfire on you. In this case, Melchit, instead of taking the bait, pretty much took him as an opportunity to basically go after the hand holding the fishing rod. He cut off a lot of territory there from Thunderhunt, or roll, well, ruining the purpose here for Thunderhunt's opening maneuver. Losing the fuel point over there as well, as you're supposed to pull the MD42 away from there because, again, there's nothing covering the center. Comes to the linear assault, but at the same time, he might be losing the MD42 here, or at least forced to pull, pull it back. 
Overall, it's a bit of an initial mess here for Thunder Hunt and for Germany. Flames here doing some nasty work there to German troops. Country Sport barely made it out of there, though. Sliver of health and all that. I mean, it looks like the Grenadiers were able to force away the conscripts there. And now, uh, ah, uh, not really good position of an info out in the opening. The losses are well to be expected. And ultimately, it sees Thunderhand once more pushed off the field. I mean, not really a solid opening now, I'd have to say. I mean, again, had Melchit, though, taken the bait, it probably could have worked a lot better. But he didn't, and so it didn't really work out. I mean, that's the sort of thing you have to take my, keep in mind when you make these kind of gambits or things like this. I mean, keep in mind what can potentially happen if it doesn't work. For example, if it depends on your opponent taking the bait with some pressure and points close to his base, what happens if he doesn't bother? And in that case, not really a lot for Thunder, and except he lost a lot of territory and he wasted some units that could have been more useful elsewhere. So in that regard, he did not really work out well there for the Wehrmacht. In the slightest. But now he's sort of getting back in the field, he's beginning to sort of bleed out, melt it a bit, but overall it's looking a bit rough. He's teched out a bit there, so for example, right now he could consider getting that light to make his company up. Maybe get some Panzer kind of ideas that sort of further increase the pressure on the conscripts. Maybe get a half check or a scout cross, something or similar. We've got a support weapon coming up here for Melchit. On the other hand, he's also got plenty of fuel. In theory, he could already tag up now and maybe even attempt to rush towards tanks or something else. Mine went off there. Someone got killed. Looks like a pioneer unit there was wiped out for Thunderhunt. A bit of a harsh loss there. MG42 in the building. MG42 covering here. A real thunder hunt is a bit all over the place. And there we go, comp engines with flame flares. We've got two flame flare teams here for Melchip, which definitely will give him plenty of opportunity there for basically forcing Thunder Hunt out of the buildings, but also basically sort of gaining an advantage in most one versus one engagements. Demo charge going up there, very interesting. Of course, gets caught. It could backfire a bit on him. It looks like in this case, Thunder has not sensed any wrongdoing there. There we go, got like the next company up. We got minesweepers up. He's obviously not intending on losing more units to mines there from Melchit. He's just getting caught by the MD42's vicious fire. We got Dennis going to support. Concepts creeping up. No mods are still here for Melchit. Very interesting. Looks like he feels they are not needed once he's got flamethrowers. And a sufficient number of conscripts. And you fortune a bit of trouble. Thunderhand doing what he can, but again, the amount of terror trinket hold, and again, the way the opening sort of went from is really not helping him out one bit. He's going to need something to sort of rapidly change the battlefield for him. The half track sort of quickly propelled troops forward to sort of vital points and reinforce, thus ensuring he doesn't have to constantly keep retreating. Might be an idea. Hands are going to could also work. They would certainly gain a bit of a good chance there versus the conscripts if properly utilized. Scout car could also work. But overall, he needs something to sort of pressure melt it and force him back. And overall, establish a bit more of a solid foothold. We got the 251 half track there on the way. Fourth Thunder Hunter, of course. Let's see if he can do something with it. And we've already here got Melchit taking up as well. Tank Vipper Tank Command up, and alright, away he could go for a T70 or a T3476 from it if he wanted. A T70, for example, if he were to rush, that would actually be quite lethal since we're able to do some serious harm to Thunderhunt right off the bat. Since he's down to basically all Panzerfausts. So that would definitely not be a bad idea to consider there for Melchit if he, that it was what he's most inclined towards. There you go, mid shoots and Panzer Wagen mobilized. Opening up there on the conscripts. Finding way with a machine gun on top. Which I do believe was actually usually the mach like machine gun for a Panzer gun. They squad one of them actually mounted there. It was not sort of n normally a part of the half track, I believe. At least I've read some parts on it. Also, one fun thing though is that usually the commander of the half track, if you will, put that, was usually the gunner there on the front. So, 
little fun fact there. Pot saving is caught, and we got a T3476 there for Melchid. Not a bad choice, but at the same time, doesn't quite offer the same opportunity for severe, well, exploitation in the form of a tiny tank that is excellent and geared towards killing infantry. I mean, the T3476 isn't bad, but the T70 just does it so much better. And it's very good at sort of wiping out units from retreat. The T3476 doesn't quite possess that mean spirited capability. The 251 half track horse will allow. Thunder and a bit more endurance, make it a bit harder to push off the field. And certainly also rule ensure he doesn't have to constantly retreat even after one engagement where he suffered some casualties. So in that regard, it's pretty neat. Still no anti-tank grenades either, so in that regard, Melchior doesn't quite have any tools for sort of quickly dealing with it. In this case, Thunder's not taking any chances. He's not taking any chances there. On this case, he's also baiting the conscripts into the MD42 there. Not too bad, not too bad. At the same time, positioning not with good MD42 force away. He's focused a bit too hard there on the right flank, ignoring the center and, more importantly, the cutoff. He's also clearly aware that, due to the way he's not really had much fuel, of course, his opponent had all the fuel. He needs to get some packs out that scrap, but the T3476 is already on the field. Mine's going down there, flesh delayed. Jürgen took a shot there and cut completely wiped out. Quick pants fast there. We got Constable there taking a bit of fire. Ran into the line of fire with the machine gun bunker. This point is a bit tricky to harass due to the proximity there to any base machine gun bunker, really. So this is not too uncommon a sight. It's not really something that might happen, like, for example, with the southern point. It's more rare towards this. Anyways, Constable's in a bit of trouble. Still no turn an anti tank rifle grenade. Oh, anti tank grenade, I mean. After they're getting some kills in the name of Deutschland. And there we go, three kills, Veteran T1. Also opening up for infantry awareness. At the same time, though, slight progress here overall. Thanks to the presence of the half track, though, again, Thunderhunt's now a bit more stable on the battlefield. He's a bit hard to push off. And in this case, the T 54 got off next to hit. We got a pack folio, though, firing back there. And we got engineers trying to rush in. We've got the half track there rushing in. And ending up there with his Lexus machine and giving it on top. And it is joining in, of course. And at the same time, of course, allowing the reinforce. Well, same with the pack 40. Over again, more endurance, more ability to sort of stay on the battlefield. Also means he doesn't have to waste time running back and forth here. I mean, that's usually a real big time waste that can usually give your opponent more time to push forwards. Holy crap, Dieter can fly! Except he's a corpse. So I don't think he's really that excited. We also noted here some light artillery up for Melchid. Not a bad, he could certainly help there with the anti-tank machine gun, though of course he could also just lay down smoke barrages, which would allow his T-3476 to then rush right past the pack 40 and get behind it, if he so wanted. Oh, shite! Got the mortar crew there, a golden opportunity by the way for Thunder, and if you notice this, to actually grab it, but looks like he's not paying attention, or is too preoccupied here with Melchid's infantry assault, which so far is bogging down here by the fences. Also, good way to use the half track in this case when Cynthia to the power students on low health. Get them in the half track. He might get a bit steamy in there, but at least you'll be alive. Dieter, you need to take a bath. You stink. You don't smell too good either, Friedrich. All right, reinforcing there. I did not be in for that half track. He might have lost a few squatters in that case. The half track's definitely paying off. It is a bit of a neglected unit, but it's really one unit that can sort of do a lot for the German forces, I feel, at the right times. A command bunker can also do it if you sort of want something a bit more static, but with also sort of range and sight, but also does cause field, so. I'll wait, uh, T-56 there coming in for the Panzer up there, Kanone. T-34-76 there, forced to roll away. Reinforcing, a bit of healing might be nice for some of them. Medic kits or the likes. We got two pack folders up here that could certainly indicate Thunder and might be playing for Doctor Armor rather than taking up going for some medium armor, so that might make Spearhead more likely. I suppose we could also go for Festering Armor, that could alter a few options. Mobile Defense might also work in that case, we could quickly bring up a Puma to sort of threaten the T 34 76. That might also work. Interesting enough, we got Melchard here with shock rifle. He's actually not using any shock troops. He seems intent on just using the conscripts there versus Thunderhun. You need something built? 
I certainly can't fault Thunder Hunt for feeling like he has to go for the Tiger because overall his fuel supply has been good. And the thing is, your first Panzer IV and getting a Tiger is usually about the same price level. I mean, if you're going to end up having to get them about the same time as it could, the Tiger could be available, you know, you might go for the Tiger because he's just going to get more punch in the field initially than a one Panzer IV. So in that regard, I suppose I can't fault him, but nonetheless, I'm not sure it's going to be that great of an idea considering there's already a tank here being down upon Thunder Honey here from Melchard's side. A minute, oh, fuel cash or two might be beneficial there for Thunder Hunt, but uh, well. Mine's going up here, MD4 moving forward. It's got Benjamin 2 for that, Benjamin 1 for the other. We've got Mortar Recruit by Melchard's plucky conscripts. And there's a forced away. And bunker up there. Constable's there continues to suffer. He's got anti tank grenades now, but he also got the half track there, almost ready to shoot, and there we go. More mobility, but also a greater reinforcement radius, which does allow you to sort of reinforce from it farther away, which can allow you some good positioning on it without endangering it, say, if that's what you want. Nations wise, we also got a ton there for Melchard. He could definitely, I think, benefit from some mines. Then again, with the mines we was out, maybe not. It looks like Melchard is basically building up for the IS-2. Of course, he's already had a nice advantage. T-3476 is pretty much undisputed, except maybe from a few sort of objections from a few anti-tank guns. But overall, not doing too poorly there. So he's probably feeling confident he can go for the IS-2, and that way. Deliver swift Soviet justice to Thunderhun. Lots of machine gun fire there. Intend the armor piercing rounds or a rifle grenade here might prove good. Another squad charge for the enemy force to switching targets. And there we go. Vetri 2 as well, which increases. Oh, almost got the contrast there again, but not quite. Melchus men do seem to have the devil's luck in that regard. Oh! Incendia Bell straight on the MD42. Looks like Melchitz rather feeling that, you know, he's not got any worries then, just can get away with it. Half track though isn't going to need repairs. Otherwise, it might as well soon become a mobile barbecue. Looking like that. There we go. Just needs a bit of manpower, and then he can add the IS2 to the field. Done, and still some time off before we call him the Tiger to survey the battlefield. But he's actually now gone for Spearhead. Also, fun fact about the Tiger Tank Battalions, the earlier variants actually had a bunch of Panzer Fleas in them, usually because they didn't have enough Tigers there, so they sort of added in some Panzer Fleas with a more stubby gun, like on the Panzer IV Command Tank, to sort of provide some extra fire support that way and cover for them. Later, though, that was quickly scrapped. But little fun fact there. We got an ice with there rolling forwards. We got the Duska there. On top. Thunder very much in the back foot again. That initial gambit again really has been him in the arse. And even with the half tank, he's had a hard time recovering from, from, from it due to that T3406. And the fact that Melchit hasn't played like complete arse with it. Now you got the ice 2 there rolling forward. Oh, direct hit on the MG42 crew, sending him to the realm of the dead. Pack 40 shot there, bouncing off the front of the ice 2 Things are definitely heating up here for Thunder Hunt, and there we go, more shots exchange. Pack 40. Half track needs to pull away. Scheiße! It's a Schützen Panzerwagen, not a Panzer! And there we go, went down. Target target weak Ah oh, never mind, the crew got wiped. No chance of target weak point there then, otherwise he might have a chance actually catching the IS2 here between two pack forties. Stunned, in which case there could have been a slim over hook there of getting the IS2. Step though, it didn't happen. Rather unfortunate there. Got more oh, that's troops actually retreating, never mind. But now we got Melchard here with a much larger force than Thunder and Thunder are now pretty much putting all hope on the uh, Tiger tank in the hopes that will turn the tide like a Krupsteel god. What 
And it's only going to hurt a bit more with the loss of that half track. That definitely left him with limited options for sort of pushing forwards. But it is time for the mid game analysis. Country chasing. Not particularly good there for Thunder. And he suffered some losses. His hope is very much pinned on the Tiger. And getting that out and definitely doing some serious damage there to Melchit. And he's probably also going to have to rely on the t pack 40 somehow catching something so he can quickly kill it. I mean, if you can somehow bait the eyes to into a trap and somehow knock it out using the pack 40 and the tiger, there might be a chance of him to get some more weapons out and basically wreck that. After that, I do think he should consider getting out a fuel cache or two to sort of speed up fuel to somehow make up for the losses there. He should also try and take away territory down the left flank as well. And finally, he should consider somehow taking up and supporting the tiger with some more regular medium armor. If he can do that, there might be a slight chance. I also think he should consider getting some Panzer Grenadiers out in the field to somehow add a bit more pressure versus the infantry. Since currently the way the Grenadiers are not quite getting any traction here versus all these conscript patrols of veterans, so I think that would be a great benefit there for Thunder. And for Melchard, he's overall doing pretty well. He's got good use of the mortar, although they kind of keep getting killed. He's got heavy tanks, T-34s, field guns, infantry, machine guns, I mean, overall, he just needs to keep the pressure. He needs to make sure he doesn't do anything completely silly. He could consider a bit of pressure and trying to flank in from this side as well. He needs to basically ensure as much as possible that Thundan can catch, you know, his IS-2 here with a lot of packs and other fun things. He should also, I think, consider if he's going to attack or anything, basically try to use the smoke barrage here for the mortar to basically obscure the lines of the pack 40s and then take them on that way. I think that could work out quite nicely for Melchard. But overall... He's doing pretty alright again. He's basically been able to take advantage and keep the advantage there again after that initial botch play from Thunderhun. We're back here to the fight to see how this continues. This struggle of life and death on the Eastern Front. Got a few kind of these there pushing forwards. T 34 rolling and we got the eyes to them. We got the field gun opening up. The SIS 3. There was also, of course, the SIS 2, which was a mo lower calibre gun. On the other hand, it had a h much higher velocity round and thus actually higher penetration, but it just couldn't do as much damage. Tiger tank there advancing with its 18mm gun. Pack 40 is also creeping forwards. Looks like he's getting into drown. Oh, getting into the building! Looks like he finally did it! Oh no! And somewhere an engineer went, Yippee! Say finally did it! The fascists finally hit the trap! He's actually charging forwards into pack 40s here! Target to weak point, Fritz! Target to weak point! There is it on that thing! I don't know! But there you go, that's actually nicely executed there! In this case, he took advantage of Melchity actually doing something a bit silly. So, target weak point, come on. It's a great ability if you can use to get it off. Again, he doubles the penetration of the shot. Meaning on pack 40 versus an ice 2, the ice 2 won't really stand much of a chance to deflect it. Plus, it stuns it. So in that regard, I do feel that was... He would have done that a bit better. Otherwise, he got the ice 2. In which case, Thunderhunter now has a sliver of hope there after knocking up the heavy tank to do some serious damage there to Melchard. Question is, can he do it or will he somehow fumble or will Melchard somehow stabilize the situation turn things around? But in this case, Vector's win the T-36 field gun here and T-34 forcing away the Tiger. So in this case, there's not really much of an exploitation move there from Funhun so far. He needs to quickly get to that part. He needs to break through and push back Fun Melchard as much as possible, take as much territory and kill as many Russians as possible. In this case, he also needs more pioneers to speed up repairs of the Tiger. He should definitely, I think, aim towards getting three pioneers so that way he can get it repaired in a minute or two. I mean, he can't afford long repair times on that Tiger. Not the current state here and things on the battlefield. We got a bit of elder Conch in there trying to get an imagine a idea of the disposition here of Melchit on the field and figure out what might be his next move and of course what might be the best move for Thundan. MD42 they're firing. I imagine Melchit might try to stay up for another ISU. He's certainly closing in on it already. We also got a demo charge there coming the fuel point. Cheeky cheeky. Both pioneers in the mines, which now you're going to repairing the Tiger. 
Mind you, Pioneer Repair Kits do not give a repair bonus like the Orba Commando Vest Mind Sweeper Kits. I'm not entirely sure if he's doing it because of that, he's thinking, no, no, might be a bad habit. Just what to say it nonetheless for clarification, just in case. Woo. Looks like someone had a good six cents there. That could easily have gone rather horribly. But overall, good pressure instead, you know, being Thunder and being the one sort of pushing forwards, grabbing out of territory, ends up being Melchert. Of course, Thunderhand's forces are slowly bleeding away, that he's got less infantry now as well. Either way, the Tiger's soon ready though, he needs to get in, he needs to try and get something killed with it. Ooh, engineers! Get away as well! By the way, Tiger, effects per right, four vets. He needs to get in there, he needs to get killing. I mean, the more that Tiger's hanging about doing nothing, the more a waste of resources it will be. There we go, though. Notice they can't support their wipe. And there we go, finding a wipe there. Took him long enough. Might respond to the demo charge. Tiger might be giving the honest of clearing that out. To ensure no German lives are polarized. There we go. MP4 through there. Veteran 2. Oh! Lost the Grenadier Squad there to the mortar. Veterans, you want? He's actually using a precision strike. Good lord, great job there by Melchip. Precision strike. Another thing, big underutilized ability there in this case, landing a direct hit there on the MD 42. Splendid. In this case, though, not quite enough. Had it been a bit closer, they probably could have wiped it entirely. But either way, he got Veteran 2 now, which will either way have paid itself off as well with that increased rate of fire and accuracy. Tanan desperately trying to mow his way back on the battlefield. Tiger though gaining a few more kills there for Deutschland. He needs to get some more infantry, some more boots on the ground. There we go, field gun getting off it on the Tiger. T-34-76 rolling forwards, again. Shots there going out on the side on the Tiger. There we go, another ice through there, Robbie for Melchett. Not too deeply surprising there. Seeing there's hardly any rush on Melchett's side to basically sort of deal with the Tiger. Well, there you go. Looks like you finally got that T-34-76 pack 40 there. Got Vetcher G2. That's certainly going to help that high rate of fire. You can catch that IS-2 there. Ooh! Incendio armor piercing rounds. Almost Vetcher G3 there. Tearing through those engineers. Look up the fireworks! Shut up! They're shooting at us! There you go, the pack following up. He should use target weak point. Come on, target weak point! Target's a weak point! Chase it! Another missed opportunity there. I mean, target weak point is your friend. Target weak point is your friend. It's really the sort of one thing that can quickly get your hands up in a fight, in particular versus the heavy armor. You can catch your opponent a bit off guard, then get you a good opportunity to get off some extra shots and maybe knock it out before he's a chance of pulling it out. The enemy is taking what we have secured. Tiger being repaired. Aircraft flying above. Mortar rounds going down. The enemy has cut off a sector. Now of course he's got a mortar as well. I'm not entirely sure what to call him a mortar half crank. I suppose to say manpower. I suppose he's not feeling like he's going to get another tiger out, so I suppose that works, but he could also take up. Might get the field gun there, needs to hunt it down. Come on, get it, get it, Thunder Hun. Nope. I missed him too, I think they have a Thunder Hun. Well, another one. Need to get that tiger repaired, by the way. The eyes two strikes forwards once more on his own. Supply lines have been cut. 
Grenadier ist tot. Straight into Vetchen the Free and the Four Two. In this case, we're able to raw past the Arc of Fire. Not too bad there. Still no Molotovs. Intriguing. Gun incendiary man's going down in the pack 40s. Bad news there for Thunder Hunt. Tiger doing what he can though. Halfway there to Vetchen 2. Ice 2 getting off a hit there. Does seem to have gone through the armor though. Another shot there. Grenadiers wiped again. In fact, no infantry left for Thunder for the time being. And the mortars are singing. Not a very pretty song, though. But overall, Thunder Hunt's very much in the back foot. He's really not been able to sort of rest the initiative from Melchett throughout this fight, even when there's been the opportunity for some reason, Thunder Hunt never, never quite got there. Bit of mortifier there. Got the eyes tuning forwards. Target weak point, come on, target, target! Popping smoke. Also obscuring the line of fire of his own pack 40, by the way. Oh dear. Another massively missed opportunity, I think, there from Thunder Hunt. And now we got some sandbags here from Melchit further, making it difficult for Thunder Hunter. We take the fuel point over there. Splendid, splendid. A bit surprised he hasn't used it earlier, though. I think they could have given Melchit a bit more holding power as well. Got Ballard going in there on the MD42, compelling Thunder Hunter to pull that back. Tiger being repaired once more. Now it's calling in further pioneers to help speed the up the repairs, which is good. They'll feel a bit late. Oh, he didn't even achieve that Vetchy 2 pack for in time. He might lose that. Yeah, he did. Another grave loss there for Germany in this fight. Getting up some good shots there. Overall, the situation for Thunderhan is bleak. Obviously, the opposite for Melchit. Damage again on the Tiger as he closes in on Veteran T2. Field gun there, Veteran T3, by the way. That will definitely have a good chance of doing some serious damage as a Tiger due to the high rate of fire, but also the good penetration it now has. There you go, Vetri, two eyes, two moves forward. Just basically going to draw fire from onto the field and basically knock out the beast. Tiger shot! Sadly not a target weak point there. Almost got the Tiger, almost one more shot. And there we go. Tiger wrecked. And that point is pretty much GG. There we go. Thunder Hans Arentes. A loss for Germany, a victory here for the Soviet Union. A bit of an interesting fight, but overall it was one where Thunder Hunt really put himself at a disadvantage due to that sort of opening up. I mean again, had it worked, he'd probably had a much stronger game, but it didn't, and again it was very much dependent on his opponent taking the bait. In that regard, that's something you have to be seriously careful with. The problem was there was clearly no backup there from Thunder Hunt. Because Melchit was able to really take advantage here of avoiding the bait and just basically going straight for the throat instead. In that regard, Thunder Hunt never really recovered. He sort of managed to sort of gain some momentum, but overall he never gained initiative. He never quite got to the point where he could sort of keep Melchit on the defense. And Melchit basically kept up the pressure with a single T-34. Then he just slowly added in the heavy armor and everything else. And he also managed to basically minimize the amount of casualties he suffered throughout the fight. He didn't really suffer any squad wipes, which is also massively to the advantage of Melchid, until the point where 
Dunn and finally got a tie gate didn't really matter. I mean, in that regard, you know, Thunderhunt probably should have added in some Panzer Gunners after the half. He should have done something a bit more bolder, aggressive, try and wrest the initiative out of the hands of Melchior, but it never quite came. He just basically sort of tried and went around for the try. Hang on. Let me say that again. He sort of tried to wait around for the Tiger in the hopes that would break the deadlock for him, but he never did. Because ultimately, Melchior was still on the front. Even then, when there was a glimmer of hope, Thunderham pulled back instead of just going all in because he didn't quite have the forces to go all in, in part because he lacked the half track which could have kept up the momentum. So in that regard, it was a series of once a cheating mistake in the start and then a series of tactical mistakes as the game went on that really denied Thunderham the chance of getting back in the game, whereas we had Meltred here really sort of keeping up the pressure and playing rather cleverly. So there you go, I hope you enjoyed this match, I hope you learned something from it. If you did, why not subscribe to your friends, share it with everyone. If not, you know, send in a replay and write some feedback in the comment section. Also consider disabling ad block if you're using that would be helpful, and if you don't feel like it, you know, consider donating to the propaganda, propaganda cast. There's a link in the channel description where you can do so via PayPal. This is Imperial Nineteen. Cheers, and thank you all for watching. Bye!